Hello, poets. I'm Mark, poet with guitar from Washington, D.C., where we had a tornado watch tonight, of all things. It was wild, indeed. Welcome to the Poets Reacts. And today, myself and my four distinguished poets will react to a poem that we're given that we have no idea what is and have not seen. And uh, as yourselves, uh, you'll, be, you'll be seeing it for the first time like us. Marissa. Thank you, Mark. Hello, my beautiful poet friends. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Um, my name is Marissa. I'm a poet and spoken word artist as well as a publisher in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Don't forget to comment in the chat, ask questions, talk with us. We love engaging with everyone who's watching. Uh, so don't forget to do that. Lawin? Hi, everyone. I'm Lawin from Manila. And about two hours away from where I am, there's a volcanic eruption happening it's on stage three. Of, uh, but but here, here I am. Here I am. No panic. Uh, and I'm looking forward to equally volcanic uh, poetry, this uh, this show. Um, if you haven't already, do the, um, do the subscribe thing on YouTube. Uh, do the like thing on all other platforms because we are there. Uh, if you like poetry, we like you. Okay, <laughs> if you don't know. So, if you don't like poetry, you're gonna like poetry, and then we'll like you, right? <laughs> well, you know, we'll try to like you anyway, okay? Because we hope that you will like us as well. Well, I'm Kim Lin, and I am your Arizona Singapore connection. I am a visual artist and a spoken word artist, as well as a teacher. So, without further ado, please send in the poem. I'll do the reading again. Yeah, yes. go ahead. Yeah, okay. I guess that you. I guess it's up to you, to one of us to read. Go ahead, Lawan. All right. Let me begin again with your arms flaking off from mine in the dream, like dead feathers from a dove. Your dusts can perish from my lips, pour down my hourglass throat. My heart will drag its weight to the light, flutter its blood petals. Mm -hmm. There is no scar I cannot lift or stretch wings in with a pen. I'll draw my water from your salt, birth skies to drink. Mm -hmm. I will draw my water from your salt, birth skies to drink, or stretch wings in with a pen. There is no scar that I cannot lift to the light, flutter its blood petals. My heart will drag its weight from my lips, pour down my hourglass throat. Your dusts can perish in the dream like dead feathers from a dove. Mm. Let me begin again with your arms flaking off from mine. You do that so well, Lawan. Yeah. It seemed as if the poem was read uh, from top to bottom and then from bottom to top, right? Yes, uh, it's yes. not, that's not a reverse poem, but it has another it's name. Like a contrapuntal, it's like a contrapuntal poem. I suppose, yeah. A reverse poem is it's all in one stanza. You read it up and down. This is in two. But it certainly was effective. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it was a really... Uh, I mean, the images are very strong. The uh, the throw with the hourglass, and and Bloody such, up. and that you know, you certainly got a sense of grief from the poem that came right through with it. I feel yeah. like it's almost like. Love. I feel like it's Sorry, almost like. It's a, <laughs> wait, I gotta have my Lawin glasses. I guess. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, I feel like. I get a strong sense that it's almost like a love letter to mother nature. I almost feel like it's the cycle of life, um, acknowledging the birth and death and loss of things, but also the recycling of things. Yeah. Um, you know, birds feathers are usually like the, something that maybe wouldn't be consumed by a consumer, uh, something that maybe would be throw away, but considering that those things still come back to the earth and still become reunited with it and become repurposed. And, you know, you touch the one in the ashes and it's, I, I thought it was, yes, very sad, but I thought it, it was more like um, acknowledging the cycle and almost like a love letter to mother earth. Or, I mean, if you don't like Mother Earth, you could just say the, the life cycle. 
So my take on it was it felt very, you know, the Japanese aesthetic, wabi-sabi, where there's a sad beauty. And, you know, in life, you can't have beauty without the dark. Oh, well, light without dark, everything kind of balances. And how can you ex uh, appreciate true joy without knowing the taste of sadness? So this is my uh, visual react response. So, oh uh, gosh, it's still dripping. Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's dripping. So the sadness of the drips, I mean, it doesn't bother me that my pain has, my paintings have drips, but uh, you know, the, the everything's dying. Time is falling through, petals are, are bloodied and the feathers of this dove is gonna fall. And, and you know, there's something beautiful and delicious about death. And uh, I mean, it's kind of macabre mm -hmm. way of it, but I don't believe that you can truly live without embracing uh, that something, uh, that things are going to end. And, yeah. and the, the death, death, death uh, but uh, so I do like how, I do like how he doesn't, doesn't just talk about the hourglass, but it actually gets visualized with the verbal structure, the whole back and forthness of it solidifies that whole imagery and that, that was beautiful for me totally yeah. rich you think about imagery death, you think about how death provides life for so many things right there's even like dung beetles right they they clean up you know waste from live animals but you think about something that's dead and how many things within the ecosystem are able to thrive and survive from that. And so, you know, a loss is still a gain. And then the recycle of how everything continues again. And it's never really, I mean, time is infinite, right? Uh, and life never really does end. So, yeah. mm. Mark, you're itchy, I know. What's up, Mark? No, yeah, no, I'm thinking about uh, when, first they want to try to find a title for this poem. Uh, which is one thing we sh we can do. And second, I was trying to think of when was this poem written? And I think it does feel very, um, I mean, the language sounded very modern. Yeah. Uh, to some yeah. extent. And sometimes it didn't. It had like a timeless kind of a way. It was just, well, let, me, let me begin again with your arms flaking modern, off my internet in the dream. Century? You know? What is what is modern to you? Does modern mean twentieth century and and yeah, beyond? Yeah, there's a certain there's a tone of language that exists, I okay. think, in in our modern idiom of poetry that certainly didn't exist. You know, it, it was much different in the nineteenth century or in the early twentieth and all the rest. I mean, today we join uh, prose a lot more with poetry, I think, than than was done then. But just Ladies the and gentlemen, the, the, Harry, um, the Indiana Jones of poetry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so 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 let's play a couple of, uh, so, a couple of so games. So the poem begins. The poem begins as I wrote. Let me begin again with your arms flaking off of mine. That's what I mean. It's like the reverse. Yeah, with your arms. It's like flaking, the reverse. Your arms Sorry, flaking Mark. off of mine. That's a kind of image, I don't know, somehow it seems to me to be a little bit archaic. It's, I, I don't think it's, it's uh, uh, it just feel, it just feels to me like it was written more around the 1900s, around the 1900s uh, or the 1920s than it does 19, uh, 2020, but uh, it's still a good poem. I what's mean, what's your guess, everybody? I mean, so uh, Mark puts it circa 1920, uh, uh, between 1900s and 1920. How about you, Marissa? I think later than that. What? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's probably, I would say 50s to 70s, 1950s to 1970s. I mean, I would even go as far as to say the 70s. I don't think it's modern as far as in the no. 2000s. Yeah, um, yeah, no, not it's not as punchy no. as uh, uh, 2000, that, mm. the, the cadence doesn't uh, ring that mid to me. Century, I would say mid, yeah. mid 20th century. I would say. Yeah, it's very it's very controlled meter. Your your yeah. dust, your dust can perish in the dream like dead feathers from a dove. Da 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 da. Actually, 
for me, yeah, that's conscious kind of a meat, kind of a meter like that and everything. But uh, so for me, it's just a bit of a giveaway. That hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying dusts tends to be a, a, a giveaway because it's used as a noun here and that's not usually something earlier grammar Nazis would uh, mm. would would deign to use. You know, so that, <laughs> grammar <what> Nazis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I mean, color, so what's let me think of a of a title for this. I'm tr it's such an it's such a uh, the poem covers such such a huge territory, you know, and the stance is both personal and universal at the same time, right? There's an I in the, the I is present in the poem. The poet is present in the poem, right? I would call it, I would call it sleep cycles because you're dealing with feathers. And I, when I think of feathers, I tend to think of down. And then when I think of down, I tend to think of pillows. And then I think this is a very cyclical uh, poem about the life cycle and recycling uh, things. And I would, I like to be very playful with my titles and I'm like super sassy with my playful words. I would call it sleep cycles just to, just to mess with the audience uh, or whoever is reading it. Um, that's just what I would do. I mean, I'm not very transparent with my titles often. Yeah. I like t I think I like titles a lot. Uh, I I I like poems where the title helps invite me right into the poem, so I kind of I kind of know what the poems what I'm getting myself into uh, sometimes you gotta be with, a with a poem, which I just find. But I think one of the lines in the poem: "I draw my water from your salt." It's a very interesting line. So I would oh, maybe dear. title it "Water from Salt" <laughs> or something like that. If it was written I in, would, if it was written in the mid to late nineties, this was, this would be titled "Reduce, Reuse, Recycle." <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it so, like isn't. the carbon footprint. You know. If it was closer to fifties uh, and sixties, I would say something like, uh, "I write your in in you know I write." <laughs> about your end or you know your you know, i would it would be a little bit more pers personal and a little bit longer you know mm -hmm. yeah i draw i draw and write your very end or you know yeah. something I, I i can't i don't have the words Do tonight it uses it if uses it was, I if it was done in the 2000s yeah. if this was done in the 2000s it would be something like goodbye 2.0 it does use a certain stance and a certain style that I think I've seen before in uh, in Lacan's work. Uh, Lacan is a poet that we all that we all know, and it almost it it feels like uh, it has that kind of stance of of ethereal, you know, metaphors playing around with another person that Hello. he's trying to get into the head of. Hello, so, are you? Right. I'm wondering if it was actually written uh, by him or someone that he, uh, he 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 chooses these he chooses these poems. So I'm thinking maybe something that really caught his eye, but we'll find out I about that. There is a good balance of feminine and masculine energies in this poem. Um, yeah. I tend to think maybe it was written by a man. Yeah. Um, but I I do feel like if it's written by a man, he was heavily influenced by women in his life. Mm -hmm. There is a, a good balance of, of that. Are we going to find out who wrote it in what year? Yeah. So th that's what we're going to be asking. It's like, so uh, can you uh, let uh, can you reveal the poet and the poem and the time? Oh, I'm so excited, though. It's by somebody who's 19 years old, born in Nigeria, a poet named Paul Idage. Uh, it's based in the USA. Wow. So there. What year? What year was it? What year it, was it written? Twenty twenty one. It was just it was just recently, yeah. written, but it was written by somebody who's nineteen years old. No, and, and the and the yeah. title is. And the title unfalling. is I'm for unfalling. Unfalling. Yeah. Like I'm not falling. falling. And that's interesting yeah. because I think younger poets also uh, sure. Uh, they're going to pick up from that that language from what's around them. I think that's fine, and I think it's a good work by this young man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. 
Sure enough. And I think as an English teacher, many of my, you know, my, my stronger, younger poets would uh, draw heavily from uh, from the wealth of, you know, literature past. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 filled. It's also filled with youth, with that youthful, idea, a lot of adjectives and a lot of alliteration and all that, which, you know, comes with with youth. The cadence, the cadence yeah. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we're running down to the end of our show today with all of you lovely folks out there watching us. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to us on Facebook, IG, Twitter, YouTube. Tomorrow is Poets Lighthouse, so tune in to Poetry Global Network again for that. It is 3 a.m. London time. Bottoms up will be this. It'll be Saturday morning in the U.S., uh, Saturday evening overseas. And don't forget, as we react to poetry and you get to watch us live, we hope you take action with your pen so that maybe one day we'll be reacting to your poem. Good night, everyone. Good night.